Hello, and thank you for joining in conversation with Rashmi. Today, my guest here is Crystal Howard. Crystal rallied a few people to help her out with trying to help the local community as best as she knows. So thank you, Crystal, for joining me today in this conversation. And you have been doing some amazing work in this community. Uh, tell me about your current work that you're doing with Grand River Hospital. Uh, to put together some essential for the nurses and doctors uh, who are not able to leave the hospital for days together. So tell me how and where this initiative even started and came about. Um, so initially, like I had just heard a few um, interpersonal stories through friends um, in regards to doctors and patients as well, um, but more doctors that have to be isolated, um, not even due to having like a positive uh, test result, but because they're simply in contact or they're running that risk of being in contact mm -hmm. and they're not allowed to leave and then be with their families or, you know, get the initial supplies that we would all love to have or, or anything like that. They have to stay quarantined or they, you know, have to limit where they go. Um, and I personally know some people, plus hearing community stories um, is what kind of motivated me originally to, to, to come up with the idea um, of, of starting to put together essentials and like what we could do outside of just being at home and sitting at home. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, you have been in contact with a couple of nurses and doctors and you've been into the hospital several times. What is the feel there and what, because we, you know, sitting at home, we hear about the efforts that they're putting in, but for you to be there and facing them one-on-one -on -one and talking and having these conversations, I'm sure there's a lot of anxiety and it's been overwhelming even for the nurses and doctors. And there's fear as well. So what has that experience been like? And can you share some? Yeah, so actually, that's um, one, like, I'm going to say, uh, misconception um, for a lot of people. Um, in fact, you can't go to the hospital. Um, so I've been on off-site locations um, with um, liaisons from the um, from the hospital or doctors and nurses themselves that are volunteering extra time or just that's part of their shift right now because that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to build their stock they're trying to be very cautious they're trying to limit any contact at all mm -hmm. um, even with doctors and nurses um, to the actual hospital just in case of any contamination um, or like like cross contamination germs coming in viruses um, just trying to keep that social distancing um, even when I go to those areas that they have designated everyone is distanced from each other um, it's very quick interactions um, very interpersonal people don't like they don't want to even with gloves and masks they don't want to be coming up to you they say and point to you, you know, you leave it here and then this is what will happen to it. Um, so even though I've been told to, to do and take um, special measures with cleaning and bagging and getting it to them, they're still doing measures over and above that from my understanding before it goes to the hospital to ensure safety of our community and the doctors and nurses. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. are the kind of supplies are we talking about here? Um, so me specifically, uh, so I'm part of a coupon community, um, you know, so we've had personal stashes of just like soaps and deodorants and things like that. Um, so that's why I was like, this is something that I can do. Um, this isn't a need that people really hear about, but in hearing these stories, again, I knew that they wouldn't be able to go and get those things. Um, and it's a big risk for people to go and do that as well. Um, but at the drop-off location, um, they welcome almost any donation. The second time I went to do the drop-off, which was uh, last week on Thursday, they had over 20, um, I, like I can share the, the photo I took, but they had over 20 boxes of 3M masks that were donated. 
um, and a few other essential PPE stuff that was there, um, as well as community members walking in on the heels of me, you know, just donating even one or two boxes that hadn't been opened and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's honestly, it's really, um, it's very quiet, very separated, um, but it's very humbling to see the community and the people that are just giving their time to try and help out. Mm -hmm. So in doing so, because I understand you and your partner, uh, you've been laid off work and it's a tough right. time for yourself and your family as well. But this whole experience has been very humbling for you and your family in doing what you can while trying to manage your own household. How has that been? Um, honestly, it's almost been, it's been really good. At first I was like, oh geez, maybe I'm a little bit over my head, but um, it really makes me feel like I'm helping. It keeps me um, motivated. It keeps me positive. Um, I think it's essential to reach out in, in a safe ways that we can but it is essential to reach out to help each other and to help communities um in getting those things that i've gotten um it's just been porch porch pickups originally and and you know major sanitation i'm fully masked and gloved i'm not seeing anyone but the notes that people leave me or or the little treats or just just what the thank yous um the emails the you know people reaching out like it's just it, it's really crazy um, and, and it, it really makes you feel good. And right now for me, I couldn't welcome any better of a feeling. Um, and to teach my son and also, you know, my fiance when our house is, I wanna say native because we are going through it like everyone else, mm -hmm. is the best way to put a positive spin on it. It's really the only thing that you can do. Absolutely. And like you said, the community has been very helpful in supporting the cause so if they want to donate 100%. more and give more where do they reach out and how do they get in touch with you um so i like a lot of people have been reaching out to me through social media on facebook um so i mean they can continue continue to do that um they're on the grand river hospital there is a donation um, little tab that you can get more information how to donate to them. Uh, it's the golf club in Kitchener, uh, the country golf club there. It's the only one. So if you Google that, um, that's one of the drop off locations. Again, very safe, very sterile. Um, but do, if anyone goes, I recommend mask and glove and just, you know, wash your hands, all the, that stuff if you are going out, um, but that they are receiving stuff there. Um, I do have a porch and it is safe. I do sterilize it. Um, so people are welcome to do porch pickups. They just need to reach out to me. Um, and, and, you know, they're welcome to do that. I, I also have other people. Um, I, I know a lady that makes masks and hats, uh, caps for the doctors. Mm -hmm. So I've been taking fabric donations for her to hand off to her to make that. Um, so anything that anyone might think that's helpful it's you know i can definitely put feelers out there i can talk to my connection at grand river and see if it's useful so um really anything it doesn't have to be toiletries it doesn't have to be masks um you know we we can all use anything at this time you know mm -hmm. and you've been talking to so many people in this community so for Others who are, you know, struggling day to day and not able to cope with what's going on, what would you tell them or what's your suggestion? How have you dealt with coping with this whole situation? Can you share some ideas besides, you know, um, doing what you're doing? Is there any other coping mechanisms that you are using or your family is? Um, you know, we are trying not to... Um not trying to let it hunker us too much down, still trying to get the exercise, enjoy the sunshine, and like I say, stay positive. Um, but I've been engaging in the online conversations. Um, you know, if you have the need to help or you, like you have that urge to help, um, there's lots of things that you can do even from your home. Um, and you don't know what those things are, um, or even if it's something that you might be willing to do. It could, 
be just a little bit of time or making phone calls for people or, you know, it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be a donation. There, there's lots of ways that people can do that. And I promise anybody that does go down that avenue, you can't help but want to give. And just even letting other people know that you're hurting and talking to people, you can get the, the support. Um, just by hearing other people's stories and being able to interconnect and share that because because of social distancing, I think the internet right now is the best way for us to connect. Um, yeah. Um, it's the basic essentials like toothpaste, soap, and you know, uh, wipes and stuff that you are collecting. So I'll post the information of where people can reach out to you as well. And everyone can reach out. Thank you so much for the amazing work you and your family and everyone else in this community has been supporting. It's wonderful chatting with you and I will be back with more fabulous stories just like Crystal. So stay tuned and thank you again, Crystal. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much. And just wanted to say a really quick thanks. Same thing to the KW community. Honestly, it is really, really overwhelming and amazing. And if we do stick together, we can get through this. And if I can help anybody out in any way, shape or form, please, please reach out and I'll see what I can do. Great. Thank you so much.